Welcome back to the Blue Chip Breakdown, Vols fans. I'm your host, Bull. In today's video, we'll be talking about Jalen Wright in the NFL draft that's coming up here in a few days. What do the experts think about his draft stock? What do I think about their thoughts? And, you know, what are my thoughts? Also, we'll be talking about some landing spots for Jalen Wright. Where could he end up at? And what do I think that he will end up at? We also need to talk about the running back room at Tennessee because we kind of talked about maybe going out and trying to find another running back inside of the portal. Is that going to happen? And we've got a little bit more portal news as well. We'll get to that at the end. But please make sure to like and subscribe to the channel. All right, so starting off with Jalen Wright, he's got a 6.33 overall prospect grade on NFL.com, which is number two, right there behind Jonathan Brooks, who has a 6.38. Now, he's coming off of an ACL injury, so I think that teams will kind of be, you know, shying away from picking him. And then Trey Benson is right up underneath Jalen Wright with a 6.23. And this is Jalen Wright's profile on NFL.com. You can kind of see his measurements, things like that, came in at almost 5'11", 210 pounds. That's a shade up under, you know, as far as weight goes, where he would probably want to be as a running back, but he definitely cut that weight down to get a faster time. I think he's probably going to play somewhere around 215 pounds, which will put him right up over the 214-pound average for NFL running backs. And you're seeing all the rest of his grades and his times and things like that. That 438 is going to be outstanding. He is a track guy, and his speed is something that is a big part of his game. I'm just going to scroll down here for those of y'all that would like to see what the experts are saying about some of his strengths and weaknesses and all of those types of deals. And I've already read it. So just to you know let y'all kind of catch up before I kind of give you my synopsis on what I think about Jalen Wright's game. But first, I want to take a look at Jalen Wright's stats, okay? We're seeing that 7.4 yards per carry. Everyone's always talking about that. Over 1,000 yards last season with only 137 carries, four touchdowns, and he also was able to catch the football out of the backfield. 22 catches, 141 yards for 6.4 yards per catch. And no touchdowns right there, but he's a guy that can also block very well. He showed that in our scheme. All right, so now on to my thoughts about Jalen Wright as a player and as a prospect for the NFL draft. Well, watched him over the past few seasons and absolutely love his game, okay? Straight line speed is great. We all know that, but he has really good vision. People don't talk about that enough. He gets to the open space as well, and I've actually seen a few analysts kind of talk about how his vision isn't the best, but I disagree with that. It's just not very many times that we're seeing him, especially this past season, just like running into some brick walls and things like that. I also feel like he runs hard. He will run through tackles. He can make you miss out in the open field. Now, he's not one of those jump cut guys. He's more of a, you know, one cut, get up the field vertically types of guys. So I would love to see him go to a system that fits that part of his game. Also, he can catch the ball well out of the backfield. That's a really big deal in today's NFL because there's so much passing going on. They're going to spread that field out. And, you know, we heard that clown, uh, you know, whoever, he's not even an analyst. I don't even know who this bum was, but he's talking about how uh, Jalen Wright has only been facing all these light boxes. Well, I mean, if you know anything about football, then you would understand that as far as the chess match goes, you're not going to be running into heavy boxes, okay? That would just be stupid. If you keep on running into heavy boxes, you're not passing and, you know, trying to get the ball down the football field whenever you've got some favorable matchups there, you're probably not going to be coaching very long, okay? Like, it's not a whole lot of room for error on that level. So they're always going to kind of play those numbers. And there's different things that teams will do as far as the way that they line up. OK, different sets with different personnel will kind of, you know, more or less dictate what the defense wants to do. And then the defense can kind of push back and dictate some things and kind of shows the mismatches on their side. But that's the chess match of the game. It's very important to have a player like Jalen Wright, who, you know, again, has all the tools necessary and gets it done up against those light boxes. And he didn't always face just insanely light boxes. We're talking about for the most part, he's seeing six men inside of the box, not always seven, but sometimes seven, sometimes even eight. But what you have to understand is, again, that's what you're going to be running up against in the NFL. You're just not very often are you going to be running up against those heavy boxes. Um, you know, they're going to do some things to try to dictate that the defense's box is a little bit lighter if they need to get that short yardage so that they can run. That's just the way that the game works. So that was just an idiotic take by, by that guy. But anyway, I think that Jalen Wright is a guy that for sure can fit into pretty much every type of an NFL system. Where I would like for him to go is a team that well, again, kind of utilize all of his skill sets, a team that we kind of use in the way that Tennessee did as far as, you know, getting more straight, straight line types of runs for him. OK, more like one cut uh, types of schemes, things like that, be able to get the be able to get the football to him out of the backfield. I think that's going to be very important for him, because, again, once he gets out in space, especially on the outside, he can make you pay. I mean, he has great, great speed. And speed kills, like we all know that. Even going up to the NFL, running a 4-3 at the running back position 
I mean, that's that's above average. I think that the average in the NFL is like a four or five, or it's like a higher four or four. So he's definitely one of the guys that can get it done from that perspective. If you pair him with a team that already has some good playmakers on the outside, a pretty solid offensive line, and a quarterback that can kind of help, you know, get the ball around to all of his playmakers, that's where I would like to see Jalen Wright go because he's going to be very productive uh, or even more productive in those types of systems. So for me, that kind of takes out Dallas. But, you know, we'll kind of get to that here in just a minute. I also just want to briefly touch on how important it is for this entire team to have Jalen Wright not only get picked high, but, you know, to do well once he does get to the NFL, just because there is that, you know, idiotic talk about, well, you know, in Tennessee system, which is very running back friendly, our system is offensive player friendly, period. So if you are an offensive player uh, from the offensive line to the quarterback, to the tight ends, to the wide receivers, running backs, doesn't matter. This is where you should want to play at because you're going to get your numbers. Okay, you're going to look really good doing it. But if the players will also get drafted after doing that and putting up those numbers, then we'll start to get more and more very dynamic playmakers, more blue chip guys. And we're starting to already kind of see that. But I would say that in Josh Heupel's offense, okay, we're talking about, again, kind of spray you out and we're, we want to run the ball. Like we are a run first offense. It's important to have really good running backs. I think that we will continue to bring in more and more blue chip caliber guys. I love what we have in the 2024 class with Peyton Lewis. I also love what we have so far in 2025 with Justin Baker, just guys that fit our system to a T. And we'll talk a lot more about the running backs here at the end. But let's get back to Jalen Wright in this draft profile, okay? I want to bring up this list right here and talk about some teams and some spots that Jalen Wright could potentially be landing at. So this first graphic are the teams that I believe need a running back in this year's draft and will be selecting one in some of the earlier rounds. That's the Panthers, Cowboys, Packers, Raiders, Giants, and the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Now, this next graphic is where I think that they will be selecting a running back at. Starting off in the second round with the 44th pick, the Las Vegas Raiders. They could take a running back here, but I really think that they'll probably end up waiting until the third round. They might want to address some different needs. But at number 56, the Dallas Cowboys, I feel very strongly that they will be trying to take a running back with this pick just because their offense is so predicated on using their running backs. And I don't really want Jalen Wright going here, okay? I don't think it's going to be a problem because I feel like Dallas is going to be picking Trey Benson. He fits their style of play a little bit better. But I don't want Jalen Wright going there, not because I hate Dallas. I actually used to be a huge Cowboys fan, but because they use their running backs a little bit too much. Like, they're running into the dirt, so to speak. And usually, once a running back leaves from Dallas, they're not that productive with the next team. And it's not because they're not good players. It's just because Dallas is going to run the football a lot. They also don't have a very dynamic offense. I just, I hate their freaking offensive scheme. It seems like it's been the same since the 90s. I mean, it's just not a whole lot of great route combinations. They don't use their playmakers very well, in my opinion. They can do it in certain games, but whenever it counts, they just can't find a way to win. I just don't want to see Jalen Wright going to the Dallas Cowboys. Okay, next team is going to be uh, with the number 57th pick, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Kind of similar to Dallas' style of play, like their scheme. It's very similar, but I'm also a Falcons fan, so I don't want to see... Jalen Wright, two, maybe three times in a season. Yeah, that's kind of selfish. Okay, I'd be happy for him to go there because Tampa Bay is a beautiful place to live. I think that he would enjoy it thoroughly. But I don't really want to see him go there. I do think that he kind of fits their style of play a little bit better than Dallas. Um, but it's more like I would say with the Raiders. I think he would fit the Raiders style of play and Tampa Bay style of play a little bit better than he would with Dallas. And the next team in the second round is at number 58, the Green Bay Packers. Now, I think that this fits Jalen Wright's style of play perfectly. Typically with... Green Bay, their running backs are more straight line guys, which is what Jalen Wright is. Again, he can make you miss. He does really good in pass protection. Uh, he catches the football well out of the backfield. All those things fit well with the Green Bay Packers system and their style of play. They also have a very young team. So I think that they might try to make a push for Jalen Wright at this pick just because, you know, they want to keep that team young. And what better way to do that than to add another piece with a running back in Jalen Wright that can be that home run threat in a lot of different ways inside of that offensive scheme. I also think that they'll go out and add some more dynamic young playmakers in this year's draft to go along with Jalen Wright. And we're talking about a team that has a really good chance to potentially win a Super Bowl in the next probably three to four seasons. They're trending in the right direction. To me, Green Bay will be the perfect place for Jalen Wright to go. Now on to the third round with the number 65th pick, we have the Carolina Panthers. Now, Jalen Wright is from North Carolina. Okay, he's from Durham, so he would probably love to go there. That would be great for him. I'd be happy to see it. Their team is so far away from being competitive in any sort of a way. I mean, 
it's going to take years and years for them to get to a point where they're pushing for national titles. Again, that's a team that has to play, that has to play up against my Falcons twice a year. We don't too much worry about them right now, though. So, um, you know, I would still hate to see him go there, honestly speaking, you know. But again, at the same time, for his sake, that's his hometown. So he would probably love it. That could end up happening. I just think they probably have too many needs to address. They may not end up taking a running back maybe until about like the fourth round. And by then, I expect for Jalen Wright to be gone. So next team is going to be with the 70th pick, the New York Giants. Now, we all know that Jalen Hyatt's up there. I think that they really like Tennessee players. He could end up falling to the Giants. Now, if they are on the board at this point, I think that maybe we see a couple of teams that are really coveting Jalen Wright could maybe try to trade up something like that so that they can beat um, the Giants to this pick. We'll see how it all plays out. A whole lot of this is really just speculation. Now, on to the 77th pick with the Las Vegas Raiders. At this point, if Jalen Wright's still there, again, I really think that he's going to get picked. Really, at this point, there's going to for sure be a run on the running backs, okay? Everyone's going to be trying to pick him inside of this round. I would say for the most part, outside of maybe Carolina, I don't think that they would. But all the rest of these teams, they need to be trying to pick him. So I do not see... Jalen Wright falling past the 91st pick. We'll get to that in just a second right here at number 87. If the Cowboys haven't already taken a back, then they would most definitely be wanting to select Jalen Wright, in my opinion. And number 88, okay, I think that Green Bay for sure would want to take Jalen Wright here because they also have the 91st pick. Whenever you got two picks kind of almost back-to-back, -back, that's when you start to take some players that I wouldn't necessarily call them reaches, but maybe don't hold as much value to other NFL teams and franchises, things like that. So, I mean, again, I do not see Jalen Wright falling past the 91st pick. But in between Green Bay's picks, we have number 89, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. I think that if they haven't already selected a running back, Jalen Wright should be very high up on their draft board, and he's probably going to be the player taken there. So just a few teams, just a few places that I think that Jalen Wright could end up fitting at or that I think he will end up getting picked at. And, um, you know, I'm really looking forward to seeing what he does over the next few seasons. Again, the biggest thing for me is – going to the right system so that he can be very productive. It's going to be very important for our running backs moving forward. We'll talk about that here in just a minute. But first, we got to talk about that transfer portal. And the news broke yesterday that Jason Jenkins, who's one of our strong side defensive ends, also can play tackle for us, was considering entering into the transfer portal. At this point, seems like that was more of his agent just kind of shopping him around because there's a whole lot of teams that need defensive tackle help. Tennessee is not one of them. And again, he's more of an end and, uh, I mean, he's very versatile. We heard Coach Garner raving about him. We heard James Pierce raving about him over the past couple of months or so. He's a guy that we were expecting could potentially kind of work himself into a starting, uh, you know, rotation with our volunteers. But sounds like he's going to be staying put, okay? He came back and kind of talked to some of the insiders and said he's going to be staying home with our volunteers. That's a really big deal just because even though we're so deep up front, we rotate guys, and we rotate those guys because, as Coach G says, once their tank gets emptied, you can't get it back. Sounds like we're going to be able to stay fresh throughout an entire 60-minute game for the duration of this season. That's very critical for us as volunteer fans. But on to the running back position because we know that Cam Seldon going down made us say, hey, we need to go out into that transfer portal and find somebody. Doesn't sound like that's going to be happening, okay? The experts and insiders are kind of saying, well, you know, the staff has gone out and they've looked at some players. Nobody that they liked enough to bring in on a visit up to this point. And the transfer portal closes on the 30th. So if a running back was going to enter into the portal or if we're going to be bringing somebody up on a visit, that's going to have to happen, I would say, by the end of this week. And they just don't see that happening. So are we going to be fine sticking with the running backs that we have at this point? I think that we could be. Honestly speaking, I wanted to bring in a running back that was a veteran from a lower classification that wouldn't mind necessarily not taking a whole bunch of reps but just having the opportunity to do so on a bigger stage and hopefully, you know, increase their NFL uh, draft potential. But Dylan Sampson is a dog. He's a stud. I think he's going to do great at running back one. Who's going to be number two at this point? Looking like Deshaun Bishop. He looked good in that orange and white game. Sounds like he looked good throughout all of spring. Not a whole lot of reps with any of these running backs, but I like the way that he was, uh, you know, blocking. Okay, that pass protection is going to be huge. I also like the way that he runs hard. He has really good vision and he shows great patience. Now, Khalifa Keith is another one that I saw a little bit more of that burst, that pot that we wanted to see from him. Being that bigger body guy, he can catch the ball out of the backfield just like Deshaun Bishop can. And he showed a really strong willingness to get in on blocking. I like what I see from him so far. He will, and both of these guys will continue to get better uh, throughout the rest of the offseason. Now, Peyton Lewis is the true freshman coming in 
that I said before the season, I felt like he would end up being running back number three behind Dylan Sampson and Cam Seldon. I still kind of feel like he could work himself into potentially that second or third spot, all depending on how he performs, uh, you know, throughout the rest of camp um, or, you know, throughout the rest of off season. He's a bigger body guy, six foot one, about 220 pounds, something like that. And he's a track guy as well, very similar to a Cam Seldon. Can catch the ball out of the backfield. I think that he could probably be more of that bell cow back, so to speak, but that's not going to happen over Dylan Sampson. I'm saying all this just to say that we've got four capable bodies until Cam Seldon comes back, which we don't necessarily know when that's going to be. We're hearing anywhere from September to October. If he can, you know, be ready to come back in September, then okay, you know, you maybe give him a few reps here and there. Just let him get back into game shape before we kind of, you know, get into some of the bigger games. Um, you know, I think that, that would be very, very important for us as a team. But it is good news. And it sounds like maybe he is expected to be back a little bit earlier than I was anticipating. And we still don't really know because he's so early on in that process. But with our system, okay, something that we kind of have talked about with Jalen Wright, okay, with our system, we are going to see those lighter boxes. We are going to spread the build out, okay? It is very running back friendly. You know, it's very everything friendly. And I think that we'll be fine because by the time Cam Selden does come back, we've got some younger guys that have got more acclimated to playing the SEC ball, okay, like they're more used to the system. But we're not really in, I would say, you know, not so much of a gauntlet. Obviously, Oklahoma might be kind of a tough game, but just in watching them in that spring game, and, we, you know, we'll get to this in a different video, but, I mean, their defense still kind of looks a little bit Big 12-esque, right? Like, it's not a whole lot of guys that you will be worried about inside of that box, I don't feel like, from a, uh, you know, running perspective on our end, especially being able to kind of spread them out. I just think that what we have right now uh, as far as guys that can go are guys that are going to operate very well, you know, in a straight line perspective. So I think that we'll be just fine. Let's just get Cam Seldon back. Let's build that depth up until we get into the, you know, uh, like October and those, like once we get into October, that's when stuff gets real. But that's going to be it for this video. Y'all let me know y'all thoughts down in the comments section. And as always, thank you for sticking all the way to the end. Please make sure to like, subscribe, hit that notification bell, share with your friends, family, and other volunteer friends. We'll see y'all in the next one. Thanks. Peace.